Now, when we hear hearts talked about in like common day, it's typically with like heart health because, uh, you know, <laughs> Man. bonus number one killer of, of of Americans every year is heart disease. I recently guard your heart was not a uh, no was not a medical uh, prescription back then, yeah, but it is today. It is today. I uh, I recently worked with a really cool company that works in heart health. They make this AI yeah, stethoscope, right. and uh, I learned a lot of facts about heart disease. Maybe we could get them to sponsor this episode. Hey, that'd be awesome. Uh, well, they kind of did sponsor us because I got paid well for that. <laughs> but uh, Us? Oh, you no, know, they sponsored me. Anyways, dude, it's about <laughs> time I get a sponsorship, bro. Come on. Um, but like every 33 seconds in America, someone dies of heart disease. Yeah, Which gosh. is, like, Lord, real, help us. that's three people a minute. We've been going for five and a half minutes, G. Which, by statistical, mathematical, means how many people? They did a really great... Uh, oh, it's not three people a minute, do they? <laughs> it was, it's it's basically two people a minute, yeah. ten people in five minutes. Did a really great episode on Mad TV about this. Right. Move more, eat less. Right. Shocker. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's old knowledge. But that, that's we, we talked about that a little bit on a recent episode a few weeks ago about truth. Yeah, but, but isn't that so crazy, though? Like, so we, that's the physical heart. And we have a lot of stats but, and, and data. And the Bible talks about the heart a yeah. lot, but it's not talking about your blood pumping exactly. heart. Exactly. But but we the heart that we do know a lot about and that we have all this information readily available to us, we're still terrible at guarding it. So how much... And then when, you know, my worst piece of advice that I hate when people say is like, just follow your heart. Like oh you hear that God. stuff whenever you're younger. And I've always thought like, eh, no. No, uh, don't, right. don't just follow your heart because the Bible says your heart is evil, deceitful, and wicked. Well, okay. And I want to get into that. So... Gee, what what is first of all? What is the heart? Because we're not talking about the physical heart. The heart is the de- so this is the definition of the heart, or the easiest, simplest understanding of the heart, where the Bible's talking about the heart. Because right. again, the the Bible's not talking about what pumps blood throughout your body. Correct. Where it says heart, the scripture says, out of the heart flow the issues of life. The scripture says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Mm-hmm. Your heart is your desire center, right? And so Jeremiah seventeen. Um, Bible says that the heart is evil, deceitful, and wicked. It will lead you astray. Mm. And so this would this would, this flies in the face of the common saying of follow your heart. Yeah, there's even a cheesy pop song back in don't, the day. Don't Listen do that. Heart. Yeah. But Ezekiel 36, God says, I will give you a new heart. Mm. This is very interesting, right? Even in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 30 and 31, uh, basically is God talking uh, to Jeremiah, and it's recorded there of the old covenant, the new covenant, and basically God saying, I'm going to take out your old heart and give you a new one, right? It does the heart's evil, deceitful, and wicked. God doesn't say destroy your heart, rip mm. out your heart, and sacrifice right. it. I'm going to get rid of the heart. Yeah. No, He says you need a new one. Right. And so what this means is that you should have desires, but the heart that you naturally have is an evil one. It mm. will lead you astray. But when you let God change you, when you let God transform you, when God gives you a new heart, you will have different desires. Mm. And so that's what the heart is. The heart is the desire center, right? We all battle with sin and temptation and desires, right? And we want to desire the right things. Mm. And so there is a time in your life where your heart will speak to you, where you can listen to your heart, but not if you have a heart that is uh, not following God. Yeah, that's so good. And Jesus talks about that when he says out of the out of the uh, abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And he talks about a good man from the good things stored within will bring out good things. So like the quality of your heart is going to determine so much of the fruit in your life. The and just- this is, is also uh, Matthew 78 uh, about David. It, Bible says that God... Matthew allowed, 78? I'm sorry, Psalm 78. I was going to say, wow, I didn't even read that one. Thank you. <laughs> Psalm, Psalm 78 right. about David. It says that God used David... I think it's Psalm 78, 72. It is. Yep. God used David to shepherd his people because of the skillfulness of his hand and the integrity of his heart. didn't say that David was perfect, but it said that David, mm-hmm. it was the integrity of his heart. Really, and integrity is the truth, Yeah. right? And so the truth of his heart, that his he had a heart for God. And that's what it says about David. He's described as he had, uh, he, David was a man after God's own heart, yeah. right? It's some of the greatest things that could be sen- said about someone. And God judges us by our heart. Mm. God cares deeply about what's in your heart. Yeah. And so, like, if you want to be a man of God, if you want to serve well, if you want to achieve your destiny, you've got to have your heart transformed, and then you've got to follow what's in your heart. Yeah. God does not put things in your heart to tempt you. Bible's clear on that. So it says that God does not tempt you. Yeah. Right? And so think about this has been some of my own uh, revelations, some of my own learnings and uh, through my own story in my life. Is, but in Joseph is this way. Joseph had a dream. Joseph had a desire. 
right? You, you, you dream about the things that you desire. That's yeah. really like there's a parallel between what a dream is and not just a dream while you're sleeping, but just the things you dream about in your life. And it's also not clear in that, by the way, you could take it either way in Joseph's story that Joseph just had a daydream yeah. or had a sleeping dream. We don't know. Yeah. It doesn't say God gave him a dream. It just says Joseph had a dream. And his dream, you could, uh, you could uh, reckon that it was a sleeping dream because of the descriptiveness of the dream, but some people dream more vividly in their daydreams. It doesn't matter. Joseph had a dream that his brothers would bow down to him. Really, Joseph had a dream to be a leader. Mm -hmm. That's what he desired, right. right? And it's not a wrong thing because the purpose of Joseph's life, if he went on to, he went on in that, eventually his brothers did bow down to him, but Joseph's purpose was not that his brothers would bow down to him. His purpose was to save all of Israel from yeah. starvation and famine. And that was because Joseph followed his heart, Yeah, right? He had Big a dream time. in his heart, but here's the thing. Your heart is evil, deceitful, and wicked. And this is something, uh, I'm so glad we're talking about it today. This is something that so many Christians struggle with because like, man, like, mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to follow my heart because that's evil, deceitful, and wicked. But like, what am I supposed to do? And what's God's desire? What's my desire? This is a hard question, but it's also a simple question. I'll tell you how it's simple. If you are following God, if you have the Holy Spirit in your life, you're not looking at things and saying, mm, is this a sin? I don't know. Is right. this a sin or not? You know. You know what is a sin or not. The Holy Spirit will speak to you and tell you if something is sinful or not. The hard part about determining the dream in your heart is that you have to allow it. And this is, we, we make our dream our own. We, it's my dream. Right, and this is what Abraham was. I, I would guess by the process and testing that God put Abraham through. This is what Abraham was doing: that he saw Isaac as his son. Mm -hmm. This is Isaac's mind now. God gave it to Abraham. I want you to have this. This is my. This is my promise to you that you'll be a father of many nations. The price that he pays goes through twenty years. All of that finally has Isaac, and then he starts saying, "Well, Isaac's mine now." Right, and so God tests. It's not that God didn't want him to have Isaac. It's how he wanted him to feel about it. Yeah. Right, and so he, that's why he tested him and, and, and asked him to sacrifice Isaac. He didn't actually want him to kill Isaac. He just wanted his heart to change about Isaac. Yeah. Right, and so look, look, you see Isaac, right, the promise for your life, whatever your dream is, see it that same way. God doesn't want to take it away from you. He just wants to burn all the sin off of your dreams. I've walked a lot of men through this journey of discovering what's in their heart, understanding their purpose, and I won't say never because it's certainly not never, but most of the time, what like what they're wrestling with in a sinful desire, they're they is act is very similar to what the the true desires in their heart are. Yeah, they just got to get all the sin off yeah, of it. Yeah, very good. Right, why they're doing it, how they go about doing it, that's what needs to change. But so much of us, like God, puts a unique thing in us, and that's what we're supposed to do. But He wants you to do it the right way, and He wants you to do it for Him, not yeah. for yourself.